Okay, now let's take this play by play. When the moon got to here, that's a growing crescent. And look, here's the real moon phase compared. That's pretty good, huh? And so when the moon got to here, you saw this, a half moon. And here's the real half moon compared. When the moon got to here, now with the light directly behind you, you got a full moon. And for comparison, here's a real full moon. But all of that is only half an orbit so far. What did we see as we brought the moon around the rest of the circle? What we saw is that the phases now start to shrink down from full, down to half, down to crescent, okay, and then a smaller crescent. So in the days after a full moon, the moon is now going through a series of shrinking phases instead of growing phases. It's moving more and more in the direction of the sun. Okay, and you see there's the sun back there. What happens next? Now that the phase of the moon has shrunk into this tiny crescent, and the moon is almost in the exact direction of the sun, what happened next? This is what happens. You don't see the moon at all. Well, okay, maybe you see the tiniest sliver in this activity. But in real life, the sun is so bright in our sky, it'd be really hard to see this tiny sliver of moon given the glare of the sunlight. The sun is still shining on the moon, but think about it. The side of the moon that we're seeing is dark. We have a special name for this phase. It's tempting to think maybe we'd call it the no moon or the nothing moon. Those would actually be really good names. But we call this the new moon because it's when the whole cycle is about to start over again. How long did this whole cycle take? Well, how long did the first half of the orbit take? If you look at your moon journal, you can see it takes about 14 days to go from new moon to full moon. Those were the growing phases. It's going to take another 14 days for all the shrinking phases to happen, to go from full moon to new moon. So we can see the moon is going in an orbit around the Earth, and it's doing this over the course of about 28 days. A cycle that repeats every 28 days. That'd make a really nice unit of timekeeping. A unit that's not as long as a year, but not as short as a day. And it's also really easy to keep track of. All you have to do is just watch the moon phases. You could almost imagine saying to someone, I'll see you at the next full moon. I'll see you one moon from now. Is this ringing any bells? We do have a unit of timekeeping based on the moon cycles. It's the month. The word month is related to the word moon. In fact, a long time ago, it used to be pronounced moonth, but the vowel sound has changed over time. And so you might not have suspected any connection between those two words. How many moon cycles are there in a year? How many moonths in a year? About 12. That's why there are 12 months in the calendar. But the 28 days of a moon cycle don't divide evenly into the number 365 the number of days in a year. And so we've had to add some days to each of the months in order to make our calendar work. That's why most months have slightly more than 28 days.